You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Hello, and welcome again to the Monster Sci-Fi Show. I am your host, The Monster, back with a new podcast in which I recorded last week a library program <laughs> that I did over Zoom. So the, the Geek Out program that I've been working on uh, since pretty much the early part of this year till now I focus on doing these type of programs with other library staff members and with patrons. So we would pick different geek out things to kind of talk about. Whether it's Game of Thrones, whether it's going to talk about Babylon 5, or in this case, we're talking about Invincible. If you've not seen Invincible, there's going to be spoilers ahead. So if you have, well then by all means, stay tuned because I think you'll have a great time listening to not just me, but I also have three other staff that's going to be with me. So I have Osmar, I have Patrick, and Jared. So on that note, I'm going to send it to myself to start the program. All right, so Patrick and Jared, I'm hoping, not Pamela, (laughs) is with us. Yes, it is me, Monty. Huzzah! There's the Jared. <laughs> Hi. So, Osmar is joining us today. So, hello. And Patrick returns <laughs> <laughs> to Osmar's question. We do need to keep the conversation PG, despite <laughs> the conversation. <laughs> About Invincible going that hard R. Let's just start off wow. with that. You probably should have chose a different subject matter. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. I, I, don't, I don't know if this can be done, PG. <laughs> I mean, seriously, you could not have bookend a more horrific way to like start a series and to end the series. My wow. God. I, I never thought I would ever feel that way about any kind of series right off the bat but i want to get your takes about what you felt <laughs> watching that opening scene that opening scene but that opening uh the closing scene of season episode one is what i'm curious about so osmar i want to know what your thoughts were uh well at first i was like oh this is going to be like a boring you know typical little cartoony show and you know i'm not really going to like it and all this stuff and then all of a sudden uh, I start watching it. I'm like, okay, right. It's it's nice. It's interesting. You know, it opens up with them and I think trying to take over the White House or something. Mm-hmm. And then as we get like closer to the end, I'm just like, wow, okay. So what's what's gonna happen here? Oh, okay. He's just zooming zooming by, and I was just like, I was kind of shocked. I was like, there's there's a lot of violence in this. Like this is serious. Like this is no joke. I mean, he just kind of grabs them and, you know, kind of uh, proceeds to, you know, um, tear them apart and use their weapons against them. And I I was like, I was pretty much hooked from that part on. I was like, oh, okay, now I I see now what this is. I see it. So I I immediately really, um, I don't know, I I became hooked. I I loved it. Right right after that, I was like, oh, I got to keep watching this. Right, exactly. Jared, what are your thoughts? Um, so I initially wasn't going to watch the show, <laughs> but my neighbor told me how good it was. Mm. And this was when they were on episode like six-ish. Okay. So I, I started it a little bit late. Um, so I got to binge watch the first couple of episodes. <laughs> and after watching the first episode, I was 
a part of me was very happy <laughs> for, for all the wrong reasons because I could see so many um, like DC comparisons with the characters mm -hmm. and how they're set up. Mm -hmm. And then to see the like equivalent of Superman <laughs> taking on that, like what people always worry Superman would be if he decided he wanted to like just be a god. Yes. To take see a character finally taking on that role and flourishing in it. Plus then you add in the voice actors that they got they cast that role just perfectly. Yes. I mean, um, I mean, everybody hates J. Jonah Jameson. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I, I thought it was really, really well done. And I, I was hooked after the first episode, for sure. Patrick, what are your thoughts? Well, um, I mentioned it before where, you know, at the time when the book came out, you know, and this is like, a, it was by Image. So Image was, they were taking a lot of things from, you know, Marvel and DC, you know, especially a lot of the creators who left these major companies. So um, when I saw it, I didn't care for it. Wow. And then my friend, one of my friends told me, you got to see this and everything. They sent me uh, a trailer and I saw it and I'm like, first of all, the animation was done very well. So that, that automatically hooked me. And then I said, wait a minute, there's a lot of blood in this. <laughs> so I'm thinking, this is, I don't think this is a typical story that, you know, I thought it was like, you know, like, a, like said earlier about how it may be boring, but then I decided to watch the episode and I was like, oh, this is very interesting. It reminds me of Authority. Mm -hmm. That's why I mentioned it before. Yes. It had the same level of collateral damage, but Authority is on a much higher scale than that, but it had the same feel. And I like Authority, so that's the reason why I said, oh, this must be good. So I sat there and watched it, and I actually watched it in one sitting. Wow. Which was a surprise. I The only other the only other series that, that I saw in one sitting was um, was Scary, uh, was it scary? Um, scary Things? The first time. Was it scary Things? Strange Things? Sorry. Strange Things, sorry. Okay. Scary thing. I'm thinking of another movie at the same time. <laughs> but um, but Strange Things, I did the same thing. It was very rare for me to binge watch and sit through. Cause it just kept you hooked Got it. each episode. And it's like you can't just say, oh, I'll wait till tomorrow. I sat down and watched it, sacrificed some sleep, but it was well worth it. It started with blood and it ended with blood. And that's, how, that's how I can put it. And you slept comfortably after that, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I was excited <laughs> to talk about it the next day. <laughs> Oh, talk about a, a bloodlust satisfying ending of a way that I'm like, you know how that mo that moment in Spider-Man 2 where you have Spider-Man saving the people on the train and he's like holding back the train with all the webs, whatever, and then they carry him off and they like protect him. Yeah. It's like the complete opposite. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding him that moment more so than the the that the scene when Omni Man takes care of the whole Guardians, the Global Guardians, whatever I forget the name of the group. Um, the Guardians of the Globe. Guardians of the Globe and oh. took him out. But that subway scene where he holds his head to the oh. subway, I, I think that is just I, I've never seen something like that ever in my life and on that yeah. scale. But to your point, Jared, this is definitely one of those DCs like, look, Batman had that dream in Justice League. He knew this is what's going to happen. So this is the <laughs> prelude, you know? Wow, that's an interesting way of putting it. Yeah. So, but my question to you guys, is there room for more superhero shows and movies like Invincible? You know, we have like 20... 23 24 movies i forget how many Mar marvel has plus tv shows and the dc movies and the cw shows and you know you get to this point or like the boys coming on on uh, on amazon that's another crazy one right so i'm like is there enough room to have an audience um because i thought like 
when WandaVision blew up on Twitter or on social media, it was a big thing. Memes came out. Falcon and the Winter Soldier to some degree. But Invincible kind of kept quiet. Surprising. I mean, there's all of us. We love it. But it just like it never felt like it was a lot. Until like, the last episode. Right. That <laughs> meme kind of blew up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Think, Mark. Think. <laughs> So I'm just curious. He wants a question about: Are we going to be over in? Uh, 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 what's the word I'm trying to think of? But there's just too much out there for uh, oversaturation. Oversaturation. Thank you. Yeah, there's definitely potential for it um, because now we have so many choices. The only thing that keeps it from being oversaturated is the fact that if you have that service. Mm. So as long as this kind of keeps it as a, I, maybe I'm wrong, but I think it balances out because not everybody's invested in Disney Plus, not everybody's invested in HBO Max. So unless word of mouth causes them to want to get into it, it, it kind of keeps a balance. If it was just openly free, you know, everybody gets to it, then yeah, I can see saturation taking effect. But now, since it's you know you have to have that service. Yeah, I don't think it's, I think right now it's a balance. Right. Um, so I think right now the streaming services with how readily people share their login with close family and friends, yeah. I don't think that's necessarily as much of a barrier. I think the biggest thing that will determine whether or not it gets oversaturated is can they keep picking unique, different stories or different angles to make these shows about? Because um, not everybody, Invincible clearly isn't made for everybody. Little kids should not be watching Invincible. The same thing with the boys. Small children should not watch that show. That's just <laughs> the reality of it. It's definitely designed for a much more adult audience. Um, and I think, that's where the balance comes into play. Do you have shows that are geared for different demographics as opposed to different streaming services? Because if they keep finding that balance, like um, Modoc on, I think it's Hulu. Mm -hmm. I, to me, that's too too childish. I would I have no interest in watching that show. Um, it, it, I mean, it's. it's just, as much as I like the characters and things, I just, I can't get into it. Um, whereas like a lot of the Marvel shows have found kind of that sweet spot where they appeal to both kids and adults, but then you need something on both ends of that spectrum as well, where it's just for little kids or just for adults. And I think that's where you're finding these newer shows coming in. They're coming into those niches of, okay, we're going to make this specifically for little kids, or we're going to make this like Invincible and the boys specifically for adults, and we're going to make it much grittier and darker, lots of blood, bad language, things like that. Uh, I agree. I agree with both of them. Um, but I think, I already think it's kind of oversaturated because <laughs> there's so many things um, out there. But um, I do think um, with the demographics, I think, um, you know, different people like different things. Um, something like, you know, the boys or like um, Jupiter's legacy and things like that. Um, if they keep doing shows like that, you know, for geared towards different people, um, I think that it, it'll work. I, I, I agree with you on that point, Osmar, because one of the things that I, I've been thinking about is like when superhero movies first came out, like way back in the 70s with Superman, the Richard Donner version, you know, it was the first mainstream superhero movie that was able to be say, that's a movie. Albeit a superhero movie, you can take it seriously. And from that point on, it, it be, became a thing in which it become, becomes a, an actual thing that you can actually be dignified to say, yes, I am in a superhero movie and not be ashamed that you're wearing a ridiculous costume or anything like that. But now, you have such like, well, like with DC, it can't be like Marvel 
DC needs to be its own thing. So not everything that they do, like the darkness of what Zack Snyder was doing, Marvel really would not kind of take that approach. So theirs is going to be more lighter. I mean, yes, there's great fantastic action sequences, but nothing to the point where you have that kind of darkness. You know, the Man of Steel was probably criticized for not being the more optimistic version of what the original Superman was. But here, the free reign is that you can go dark or even super dark that, you know, like when you thought like that's enough darkness with the boys, wait, invisible, <laughs> hold my beer <laughs> and it goes one step further. So, but then like you said, Jared, when you have something like Modoc, which I'm like, I saw like a preview episode. I'm like, I have yet to laugh. <laughs> I'm like, no one's going to come to this program. But it sometimes is like, you can have just like, for those who love like, haha, more funny, funny stuff, you can have that. So within that range, you know, you have like the different genres. I mean, Ant Man and The Wasp is more comedic than, say, Captain America and the Winter Soldier, you know? So within those within that space you have that are funny, some are more action oriented, and that's okay. And I think you have that, but again, unless you have a platform and you pay for that platform, you're not gonna know that it's out there. And the fact that Robert Kirkman, who did The Walking Dead, who's still producing the comics and the graph uh, and uh, the, the T V series had this series run alongside as that was going, but Walking Dead kind of overshadowed everything about the comics. So luckily, you know, we kind of get invincible now, and I'm glad it did. But never in a million years would I ever thought like that is a thing that I'm like, I am so in for Invincible. So, so let's talk about Mark Grayson as Invincible. And I wasn't going to do the title cue card with the blood splatter. <laughs> yeah, keep it PG. But I love every time that he has that, you know, looks like it's not, something like it looks like a job four and a splash, the title card, Invincible. But there was always a lot of blood on there for some reason. And I'm like, what? <laughs> um, having him start off like any other teenager with superpowers he was fine and i was happy with that um even that moment that he has a game of catch with his dad but like why their backs turn to each other and they're like oh literally they just throw the ball around the world and i'm like wow that is something i've never seen in that kind of vein that you know like the normal peter parker you know growing up with powers like we see the world through his eyes, but this is something completely different, even though he has friends that don't know his secret identity and the girlfriend that always hates for him being late, which I'm like, oh, we've seen this already, you know? But the troubling conflict comes when he has the relationship with his dad, which I think is interesting. Um, what are your thoughts about Mark Grayson? Um, I think Mark, I feel like Mark thoughts starts off like really innocent, like you know, like I, I think it's the first episode where, uh, no, I don't know, I don't remember which episode it was, but um, I think he got his powers and his dad is trying to like coach him, mm -hmm. and his dad hits him too hard, and he gets really emotional about it, yeah. because he's not used to his dad that way, you know, he's not used to that kind of serious side of his father, so I I feel like he starts like growing up little by little and kind of um seeing you know experiencing different things as like um that's that superhero side i like mark yeah <laughs> what about you jared i thought the way they did it was well done where they showed both like the human side of him and the more conventional like human father-son relationship especially mm -hmm. but then they also mix in those elements of the superpowers and his dad trying to show him that he is different from everybody else. They can't have the same relationship um, that like a normal parent and child would have. 
and that slowly evolves into something much darker as Omni Man's character becomes darker and darker. And you can kind of see the like internal conflict that Mark has when his dad says or does certain things that he doesn't necessarily agree with and him like any kid having that conflict of okay do i listen to my dad or do i listen to my mom mm. when they're both telling me kind of contradicting things right so i thought that aspect of it was actually pretty interesting what about you patrick um one of the things i mean it's i mean after reading so many different books and it, they, it's kind of the typical, you know. The, I don't know. I just it just seemed like I've seen this before, but at the same time, I like more Omni Man's take on it <laughs> compared to his. Like Mark Grayson's, is, I, I've seen this played out. The difference with him is the fact that now he he has to realize. Oh, this is much more than what I expected, and but surprisingly, and I had to go and go go back and research and go back and you know look at some more stories because I like I said I never read it. And to me, the the, the, the person that really stood out in this whole thing really is more Omni Man because he's more he has more he even though you've had stories where if, you know Superman went bad, this is how it could be, but Omni Man surprisingly is to me he's more interesting because for what he stands for and how he he has literally two personalities you know where when it comes to before he started revealing who he was or what his true nature was it was like he seemed like this typical American dad you know and you know sometimes son you got to be tough you got to do this and that and so he's and surprisingly Mark Grayson is responding the same way what a typical teenage boy would respond you know mm -hmm. i think my dad is just hard on me and he's just trying to get me ready for the so it's like you right. kind of like expect it but at the same time it's like Omni man is like you're seeing like father slash villain slash superheroes like i mean you're getting you're getting like multiple personalities in one character and to me he's like more folk to me he's more the focal point of the story than it is mark mark yeah. is just trying to learn how to deal with his dad and his whole outlook in life as we're segueing to Nolan. Yeah, exactly. Leads it right into this perfect segue. It's interesting that I'm going to just put this out there. I never was that comfortable seeing a superhero with a mustache like, like that happened on Justice League with Henry Cavill and that weird thing. But it was like why is that a thing with a mustache? And then, like, the backstory, like, all the men of his race also had mustaches, which was like, what? Incomplete hate facial hair is evil. Everybody <laughs> knows that, Monty. I mean, thank God I can grow some hair, so I'm like, I'm covered, so I can pass as one of them. But I've never seen a superhero be, or in this case, a villain, uh, have a mustache like that. I mean, granted, he looks like J. Jonah Jameson, which is ironic that it's J.K. Simmons anyway, but it's fantastic to see something that's different. So, uh, but yeah, as far as Omni Man, you know, you're right, Patrick, that he does have that everyday kind of personality that he has, the face that he shows to his wife and to his kids and to the public. You know, he's compassionate when he has to be when the the league you know was killed you know but there's a completely different side it's like how can you take care of the most powerful man and there's only a couple of handful of weapons you have one is his wife the other one is cecil and third is going to be mark but um, that's an interesting dynamic that he's able to, like all these years, keep so much of his own history hidden away from his own family that they don't realize who he is. That, I think, is very telling about who he is. But then as we go into that, his backstory, that's, that's messed up. 
Actually, I just want to say one thing. Yes. I mean, if you ever read more, like like I said, I had to go online and read more about him. It, it, his ultimately his story kind of it doesn't. I mean, it, I don't know how far they're gonna go deep into this, right? Uh, into the story, but his he's an interesting character. If to me, and I'll leave it like this: he's 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 what he he's a typical Marvel character. Where they, you know, they can do some crazy things and go through so many multiple changes, but in the end, he has his moment, and I'll leave it at that. Okay. But the other thing too is like again, the father and son dynamic is even more prevalent because you know when you get to that point, like I experience in my own life, where the person that you grew up with would always be telling you how to do things, and there's going to be a time in which you. Push back and become, you know, you're making your own way in life. And, you know, so you have that kind of weird, like, you know, I'm not yet a man, I'm trying to make my own way, but, you know, you have a father who is really, it's almost like the Gray Santini. If you ever see an old Robert Duvall movie, I will put it in, in, that, in those terms. So it's from the 70s that he is in the military and he's hard on his son trying to man him up so to speak because when he goes he has to take care of the family which is in, in high side what happens but he becomes the son becomes more like the dad at the very end so it, it's interesting that that's the thing that normally that's what we would normally believe he's training him preparing him so that he can take over almost literally in that sense of the word take over which i find interesting so one of the cool things that I love are the all the little nods, especially to DC. There are versions of different heroes. The Aquaman type here, Martian Manhunter. <laughs> the uh the one woman with the staff. Um Immortal is the only one that I remember because he came back. <laughs> um uh I forgot his name. He was the blur, the red blur. Flash. I know it's Flash, but the, the character name on the show. I think it is. Is it the red blur? It could be. I may be wrong. Yeah. Um. And then you have the the Batman type, and again, I'm forgetting everyone's name because I, I know it's supposed to be Batman like, but you know. Well, they only last one ep one episode, so technically, not, none yeah. of them are dead. Right, exactly. You're <laughs> not going to be faulted for that. I don't think we were supposed to remember their names. <laughs> oh, I think that's part of why. Uh, but yeah, it was, again, it was kind of cool to see, you know, and it's not just these characters, but there's other characters that are like uh, other combinations of other familiar characters that I was like, okay. You know exactly what they're referring to without having to call it that, so you can just do that as your own version and make it a new thing. So, but I appreciate you know the Guardians for what they were able to do, albeit a short one. Uh, but uh, I do want to say one thing. Yes, um, <laughs> like the Immortal. That's basically Vandus, Vandal Savage. I, mean, I was kind of. That's a good call. Like, yeah. How they kind of just made him the leader of a group. So hmm, it was interesting how they chose that. Uh, chose him as a as a character to lead a group. It was usually Randall Savage doesn't his character type is not one to be with a group. He's usually right. his own. He'll have people, you know, who he leads, but he doesn't like have a group group. I thought it was interesting. And it's got that full beard too, just like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then we get the Teen Team, <laughs> not the Teen Titans, the Teen <laughs> Team. We don't want to get sued now, boy. But yeah, it, it's again. I, I love the, the Teen version of this group. Um, the the guy next to robot, I forgot his name. I thought it was um It's um It's not it's not um Rex Gambit like because he has that kind of kinetic power. Um but the voice actor I thought it was um 
The guy from Deadpool. I know. No, his friend. The oh, T.J. Miller. T.J. Miller. I thought it was him, but it's not. It's a guy altogether different, and I'm just like, yeah. He was like spot on, and I love him being, you know, the not the nice or nice guy <laughs> that he became, you know, messing around behind. Um, with duplicate. With duplicate. Oh my god! No, I got to explode. His name is Rex. Rex explode. Thank you, Rex explode. Yeah, with duplicate, and I'm like, that was fun. Yeah, that I, was. I could see that being a thing. I <laughs> mean. <laughs> But I also love Robot too, you know, uh, played by Zachary Quinto. And that's the only one that I kept remembering. It's like, that's Zachary Quinto, that's Zachary Quinto. Um, and then, you know, the team reformed again and they had uh, Monster Girl joining, wow. which I thought is fantastic. I love that, uh, that character as well. Um, and then I think, um, is it Adam Eve? Yeah, the one in the middle? Adam okay. Eve is the, the one in the middle there. All right. Um, because I was doing research and I'm like, I somehow went to Wikipedia in the, in the, for the comic section. And then I read something I'm like, oh, I'm kind of like spoil myself, but you know, that invincible and her are, you, you can see there's some relationship forming, you know, it's not really there yet. Um, but again, I, I really enjoyed the teen team, uh, that came to be. Uh, so let's discuss um, any of your favorite moments that come to mind. So I'll leave it up to you guys to talk. Oh, I like the flaxens. They just kept coming back and coming back. <laughs> the they were like the cockroaches of the of that thing. They just kept coming back. <laughs> yeah. And always being defeated, come back thousands of years on their end. Yeah, they stopped. They got a thing to stop aging. <laughs> then Omni Man woke up from his whatever and just destroyed their home world. No, but that was the start. Um, yeah, I also like the um, what's, what's his name? Oh, the the one eyed guy. Yeah, that one is uh, the Seth Rogen. His voice for that character. Oh my god, I forgot his name. I, I like that. I like that conversation. Him and um, like Mark had. He thought it was it was Earth. Yeah, or it was Earth. I, I I really like that. I thought that was really fun, and and also that weird, the, the weird robots with the with the the one Black the, that the that the guy makes in school when right the, cy the cyclops guy that he, he yeah. Ran with, yeah yeah that was messed up. That was really messed up for me. I I like the whole that that episode. You know, I thought I kind of felt bad for uh, I think William and I guess his partner or whatever. Because they completely, I mean, poor guy. That, that's what I thought. He was so excited. He was so excited and so ready to go there. And then just, oh, man. Yeah. That was what I stopped. Um, the, one of my favorite moments was, I, I, I'm, am I blanking out here? Is it Demon Spawn? Dark Spawn. Yeah. I forgot his name, but he Clancy was basically... Brown. Yeah, Clancy a Hellboy Brown. version of like of a detective, which I'm like, yeah, wow, that is fantastic. I love that. You know, I'm like, you know, it's Hellboy, but we're not gonna mm -hmm. do that. But still, hearing Tom Clancy again and playing that character, I love him. You know, amazing voice. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. And then they sent him back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You got too close. We're sending you back. You did your job. Yeah, and that's the crazy thing. It's like they ask him to find to find out what's going on, and he does, and then they send him back. I was like, well, is that what the purpose of why you got him there? <laughs> and because he's gotten too close, now you got to get rid of him. It doesn't make sense. But now I, I understand was, why. I think, it was, I think it was more because I feel like Cecil knew that he wouldn't let it go because if, if you watch like he's really insistent like he's always kind of stalking them going into their house so I feel like he sent him back because obviously you know Omni-Man is so powerful if he just kind of confronts him it's going to just kind of explode and he'll have no control I mean not that he did anyway but you know yeah but it, it feels much like he's like um, more kind of Batman-ish 
Like he would know, like he will like prepare for that day. He has a whole agency to work with, but he'll make sure that he has a way of lining. Or, well, let me put it. I would say more Lex Luthor. Let's do that way. Not so much Batman because Lex Luthor was always against Superman. So in this case, Cecil was always kind of preparing, knowing that you need to get Mark ready. You know, telling his wife, uh, not uh, uh, Omni Man's wife, to get you know Mark up and running because we don't have much in our arsenal left. You know, so even though you know you got the Cyclops army being built, you got the Teen Team being upgraded to being the new Guardians, it's still not enough to take down Omni Man. Hmm. Um, one thing I thought was interesting is when they added that uh, there was a um, that one story where that guy took out one of the gangsters or some yeah. criminal organization. It's like they kind of thought that was weird how they had that one side story. Now there could be more to that later on, and I don't know, but I thought that was kind of weird. And for a or an episode. It was just, I guess maybe it was a teaching episode, but it was just weird how, how it ended. And then it yeah, just... I, I, yeah, I think it's more about setting up for season two, that storyline. Yeah. But it reminded me, I don't know if you saw Luke Cage season two. It ends with Luke Cage kind of running in a Harlem. And that felt very akin to that. That he uh... became a new boss. That he was... Uh, the henchman, so to speak, and then he took out the guy, and he became the new leader. But, um, but yeah, I'm happy for everything that I saw on the screen, and I cannot wait. And uh, and we got two seasons for this, two season two and three that were uh, approved. So I'm like, we're good. We're all them on this. Uh, what about you, Jared? Any other favorite ideas or moments you want to talk about? Um. So I, oddly enough, I, one of my favorite like interactions was robot when you find out that he's not actually a robot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> like that. That kind of like side um, story to me was it. I I don't know why, but that one I was just like, oh, like I like that. It's it's an, an interesting one. And then to have him rejoin the team and be like, oh, yeah, I was just lying to you guys the whole time. I'm not actually a robot. <laughs> yeah. And he's a and, clone of Max Blode or something. Yeah, yeah. Rex Blode's Rex like, Blode. reaction when he sees yeah. him and is like, why do you look like me? Why do you have my face? <laughs> like that whole, that whole thing to me was just, it, it's so like borderline absurd. Yeah. That it, at the same time, it was hilarious. But it was also had the kind of Quato from Total Recall vibe. That strange mutant baby that I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> oh, but yeah, it, it's one of those, like, there's just, I, I, I re- want to rewatch it again. Unfortunately, I ran out of time before today's program, but it's definitely going to be something I'm going to rewatch again. So, the, the thing that I want to talk about is how do we get to here? This is this moment, because again, this is as much blood I can just show without going too much into the visual visual uh, ugliness that happens where it's like Omni Man is doing things to Mark blaming him for the cause of all the death that he's causing that Omni Man is causing like the building scenario that he's holding up the building and he's grabbing the mom, the mom is holding the daughter, and the, and the building is like, it's coming down on it. I mean, you think that he saves the family or the mom, and there's the arm, and that's all there was. It's just the arm, and I'm like, oh my God. And then Omni-Man had the audacity. It's like, you know, this is all your fault, Mark. If you just listen to me, none of this would be happening. And I'm just like, it, it goes, not only super dark, but it goes from worse to obscene abuser, you know. And I just, like, I've never felt that way in just a short span of time in a series. 
especially in this kind of father-son relationship. Well, that, Go ahead. That, that, that's why I said in the beginning, it's like he's more, <laughs> Omni Man's more interesting than Mark. You know, because of the fact that he has so many different layers and just he throughout this one season, he ha- he has shown multiple personalities and multiple it just he's just totally disco. Yeah. You, you, it's like one episode he's one way and in an episode he's another. And then you think that you understand the character and then it's like okay, that doesn't make sense. But Mark you understand. You actually understand Mark from beginning to end it's only man is the one that is just there's too many layers yeah and like i said they just brushed the surface on him there's way more to him so that's why i was like ultimately i've always wondered who's really this story is about is it about him yeah uh, is it about mark or is it really about the dad or just their you know what is mark is trying to avoid not to become like him but yet they're kind of playing it's like I said, to me, it's a story about them too. It's not just about Mark. It's what I, from what I gather. Yeah. Um, I also thought too that the mom being um, not a typical mom, like she actually stood up, like kind of like finding the the bloody uniform and kind of confronting Omni Man about this, and like not really backing down. You know, like that was the one thing that I was in, impressed with. Like, you know, they're married, but yet she has no powers. But yet she has like this thing about her that he's not going to kind of go past that point where he's going to like injure her like he did to Mark. You know, the most he did was like he punched the wall, made a huge hole in that wall, but then he flies off. On the other hand, Mark, <laughs> think about it, gets a beating out of his lifetime, and suddenly we get a flashback oh. to the baseball game. <laughs> oh, this is so cute. I thought that was so sweet. I think he loves Mark. Oh my God. <laughs> the fact that we see young Mark and I like I have like a little gap too, but it just like it looks. So seeing Mark that way as a little boy and holding, you know, an Omni Man is there, is happy, he's cheering for him, and then flash to his teeth being <laughs> missing almost. <laughs> that the that combination of imagery was hard. <laughs> that you know. Look, I can make another one in 17 years. No, I don't care. You know, and he's just wailing on his son. It was just like, oh, there, there's just so much that is wrong with this series that I love, but I'm like, I can't stop it. I mean, it's like being in an abusive relationship. Well, right. no how many, that, that's basically what it's, I think, it's like that's how it kind of plays out. But I, I think the difference in the interactions comes from even what Omni Man says. He sees Mark as like a potential successor or equal. Uh-huh. And that's why he's trying to like literally beat it into Mark that he's different <laughs> and better than everybody else. <laughs> he, he even says at one point that yes, he loves Mark's mom, but he, in the grand scheme of things, he doesn't view her as necessarily anything more than the equivalent of a pet. That line, that line, oh my God, that's the worst thing to call your mom. <laughs> and I, I I think that that's very telling of the difference in the interactions that Omni-Man has with Mark versus the mom, is that the he, he would never, like, physically strike her because she's not worth his time to do so. Where whereas Mark has in his eyes the potential to be like him. So that's why why he goes to those extremes with Mark. Mm. Whereas just the, the mom's just not worth 
the effort or the time because she's the equivalent of a pet. Yeah, yeah it, it kind of reminded me that the moment in Justice League, like when Superman uh, fought against Dark Side. I think it was Dark Side in, in the animated series. It's like, you know, I'm tired of living in a cardboard world, but I'm always holding myself back. Yeah. But you, you could take yeah. it and start to yeah. win. Yeah. So that's the kind of feeling that I'm like, it's like the complete opposite. Like, yeah, Superman's really nailing him to so Omni Man. Oh my God, he's really nailing his son. I'm like, it's complete opposites on the spectrum doing the exact same thing. But my God, I've never felt that way in such a long time. <laughs> mm. So yeah, wow. I, I I don't know where this is going. Like I don't want to spoil myself by reading ahead, but we got a ways to go before we get to see season two. So who's gonna read all the comics? I mean, I'm I'm tempted to order the omnibus <laughs> if there is one. <laughs> But at the same time, I'm like you. I'm like, I don't necessarily want to know. <laughs> That's what ruined The Walking Dead for me. Yeah. Is that the, the show and the comics split too far apart. And it was just, now I can't follow either of them. Right. Which is a, a, a good point you bring up. Um, because one of the, the criticism was that the comics and the series were alike, right, for Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. And you know that if you read, like, the governor storyline, it's just a matter of time before the series caught up to that. And same thing with Negan, and then the death of a major character by Negan with Glenn, which ironically enough, Glenn is the voice of Invincible, and he has the whole cast of, it, of The Walking Dead as his, in his group. But Robert Kirkman mentioned in a podcast saying that, you know, the series is old enough that he can go back and like revisit it again and make certain changes, such like, uh, Mark's girlfriend is completely different from what she was represented in the comics. Same thing with her mom, his mom. Made her a little bit more stronger and make the cast a little bit more diverse. You know, and, and his argument was that that was his mindset back then and looking at it this way, like, no, we should update this to be different or at least, you know, more reflective, which I'm glad he's willing to do that and not just saying, well, no, that's the way it is. You know, in our reality, we want to have as many eyes, in my opinion, on a property like this, you know, so. But the question is, would you want to stick with one day when you do read it, do you want that to be the literal translation or do you want to see a variation of what you read? To be surprised, maybe. I don't know. I probably say variation because like i said for me to since i haven't since i willfully did not read it back when it came out i decided to just go online and just get a basic understanding and then after going through all that i realized i hope they do a variation what i think they will do because it's just there's a lot of story there and when you really think about it they can i mean if they stick close to the story this is more than see, you have to do at least season four and five and right you know yeah because it's pretty extensive even though the whole series is done and it's been done for a couple of years mm -hmm. but it, there's so much story and some of the characters will surprise you so i hope they and i think they will do it they'll have a variation of it you know um because there's a lot of storytelling and and there, some characters are more unique than others mm -hmm. that they didn't really spotlight too much right so, and they can do a whole lot on Omni Man. Like I said, to me, he's the most him and the and robot are the only two that really are the most interesting characters in this whole series. And I'll leave it at that. Okay, I'd like a variation too, but you know, try to stick as close as you can because <laughs> I want to see more. I want to see more of a. Uh, you know, what happens to Omni-Man? You know, where did he go? Where did he leave? What's he doing? Oh. Yeah. I think you have to, you have to pick one way or the other. Right. You have to either say, we're going to use the same characters, but it's going to be a completely different, like, storyline and story character arcs or we're gonna stick to the source material. Cause if you try and 
pick something in the middle, you're going to alienate both types of fan bases and you're going to end up where kind of nobody's happy and nobody's going to know what's going on. Um, and I, I, I'm hoping that's something that he kind of realizes it's okay to tweak small things. Um, but I think like working on the walking dead, he, at one point he said he had an idea for, or a concept of how it was going to end for the comics and where it was all going. And then they started making the show. And now, unless he changes the comics, the show and the comics are going to end completely different because certain things have happened. And like I said, like for me, they've changed, they, they've tried to keep some things the same, but they've changed so many other things that you don't know which one to follow. Right. And I, I think they have to be careful not to to make too many changes or too many big changes, especially to what people perceive as main, or main characters, because then you're gonna wind up with, okay, well, I don't know, should I follow the comics? The comics don't follow the show. Yeah. The show doesn't follow the comics. I, there's too many other things for people to spend their time on to kind of be confused by what's going on between two different things that are supposed to be the same. Right. I, I agree. It, it's much like um, the Watchmen scenario, where Zack Snyder did literally a whole visual representation of the graphic novel, almost frame by frame, except the giant squid. If you haven't seen or read, the giant squid does not appear in that version. Although, the HBO Watchmen series, the squid does appear and it makes more sense now. And I'm glad they did that. But it's one of those is that I, 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 there's arguments for both. Um, because from what I heard is that what happens in this scene that we've been watching, it's a lot more worse in the graphic novel or in the storyline. So if that's the case, and they're not really kind of using their full potential, I want to see that full potential and then just be satisfied with that. So as long as you do that, I'm good. And so I'm going to have to like limit myself to a certain point, like, okay, this is where season one ends. Let's hold off. Let's not go any further. So I, I really want to enjoy and see what was left out and maybe compare the two, you know, after one season's done, read those books and see what was improved or disimproved or not improved, but to see what was could have been enhanced more. So that's the only thing that I would want to see is how brutal that meeting. Because <laughs> man, I, I I could not that I want to see more violence and I don't advocate that, but sometimes there are days in which you need to have some kind of blow off some steam. That does it, you know. So on that note, guys, we're almost done with our show. Uh, so I, I honestly, I don't know who's going to show up for this. I might not even show up for Mode Objects. And it's weird because uh, Hulu dropped all the episodes on one day. So all of them are available, wow. like less than a half an hour long. So we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the one that I am interested in is Yasuke. If you remember, well, I might have talked about this. I'm not sure who I talked to about this before. But Yasuke is the first African samurai that Chadwick Boseman was planning to play before he died. Oh, wow. So this anime series is that story. And it's a series. So I, I really want to see and talk about Yasuke, you know. Um, it's really good. Is it? Okay. Yes. Oh, wow. I started watching it on Netflix. <laughs> yeah, I'm just episode one, so nobody's... Okay. Yeah, I saw episode one. Nobody. So, I, I, 
took a fight a couple weeks ago and I binged it on my fight. Okay. So it, it's good. All right. So at least we have something to look forward to. <laughs> Not so much no luck. <laughs> But I hope you guys come back for that because I think that will be really interesting to talk about. Um, because again, a lot of the things that I've been discovering um, as I go through my reading of graphic novels and even TV series like Watchmen on HBO talked about what happened down in Tulsa. I never knew that happened in Tulsa. I read the Captain America truth graphic novel which takes place in the captain and winter soldier uh series isaiah makes a reference to the red summer that is something i also did not know that happened so sometimes we come across things through literature that are like opens your eyes to things that you would never expose to and it's heartbreaking that this happened and the fact that we had a YA meeting in which there was a, a hundredth anniversary about what happened in Tulsa to talk about this so I did not know there was an actual African samurai that existed so this kind of thing is I'm glad it's finally coming up to mainstream but there has to be more that's out there that is not even talked about so imagine the, the mountain of materials that is yet to be on to be discovered by you know an audience so that's why i'm hoping that something like yasuke can be that kind of thing that kind of gets more people interested in you know it's not just like it's an anime show no it's a little bit more like think of it like historical fiction but this is real just in this format for you to like you know so and however way you get there it's you however you get there that's all it's fine but it's interesting that we've gone to this point in our lives that we have history still to learn. You know? So I don't mean to be preachy. I just, it, it, it's, <laughs> it's just, been, it's no, been a it's, thing. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. So, and I just, again, I want to see more of this type of programming that we can talk about things that, you know, our, our favorite actor, you know, being Black Panther, he wanted to do this character, and I would have never known that's what he wanted to do. So that's why I'm doing this, you know. So at least he sets me on a path. So. Yeah, that's the one thing. Uh, I just want to say this that, sure. you know, with the streaming platforms, mm -hmm. you know, it makes it where now anybody who do pick up any properties or any uh, stories that were not told to the public. These platforms do give that, um, or these subscription services that give that opportunity for these things to happen. So it's actually a good thing mm -hmm. that you know, especially like you just heard what happened with Amazon is planning to buy MGM. Yeah. And so when we hear that, you know, especially now that they're taking these, you know, these platforms serious, you know, Netflix kind of started it, where they kind of, you know, put out stories where you're like whether it could happen or it did happen, you know, that it gives that opportunity so that we can see it. Because otherwise, if it was done on regular, you know, um, regular, uh, uh, um, I'm forgetting the word, but anyway, if it was done on the, in the traditional way, we probably wouldn't have seen these. Right. Or these probably wouldn't be available. So it's actually, we're in an age now where information is readily there. And there's always somebody that's going to be there and to put it out there. And this is, just enjoy it while we can. Because these are, I remember, and not to go off on a tangent, but my friend used to have a comic book store. And we used to always, and this was back in the 90s, we used to always talk about, well, wouldn't it be great to have this book if we did this story here? I mean, there's stuff that we all just talked about and have big, these big debates about. And now, after after you know the 21st century you know coming into 2000 now we see it now now they're making this stuff readily available even to some degree like what we discussed earlier about saturation now we're getting a lot of it but this is a great time enjoy it and also it educates because like i said back then we wouldn't have this right you know, so it's just amazing that more and more you're seeing these things come out where at once it used to be dreams but now they're becoming realities 
Great point, Patrick. All right. Um, any final thoughts, Osmar, Jared? No. No. All right. I, I loved it. <laughs> Good. Well, I, I've had a great time as always with you gentlemen. So thank you very much for uh, doing this. I appreciate it more than ever. Because uh, again, if we don't support each other, no one's going to do it. <laughs> so, but uh, I, again, great time. And I can't wait to do this again. Definitely. Even if it's remote. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'll watch one episode to be fair. Fine, that's all I ask. <laughs> yeah, you're braver than I, Patrick. <laughs> Listen, if I can watch Robot Chicken, which I do like, I mean, I think this is in that same vein, so I, I'll give it a chance. I mean, Seth Green did produce it, so I'm like, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah we'll I talk. guess maybe this is Marvel's Robot Chicken, I guess. Yeah. I'll watch the trailer. <laughs> the trailer? <laughs> I'll give it two minutes of my life, and that's it. No more. I'll check it out like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. All right. All right. Take care. Have a great Have a good day. One. Take Thanks care. Again. Bye. <laughs> All right, so that's going to be the end of today's podcast, and I hope you had a just as good enough time as we did doing our conversation about Invincible. So I'm not sure when I'll be doing the next one that's going to be not Dune related because that's the next thing I'm work, working on. But I'm hoping to get with Mr. Gene and just again coordinate our schedules to the point that we can start doing an actual podcast together. So my apologies. But again, Mr. Gene is going to be on the Dune podcast anyway. So again, Dune Book 2 will be coming out. It might be a little sooner than the end of the month, just because, again, it takes a lot more work to be uh, producing this because I'm doing it two different ways. The strictly audio version of the podcast and then the enhanced version with the presentation. And that's exactly what I'm going to be doing with Invincible as well. So the, the presentation that I did, I will also have that on YouTube. So... If you're seeing this in your show notes, go back after you listen to this, if you want. I will post a link there to my YouTube page, or I'll just leave... I just might as well just leave a link to my damn YouTube page. I mean, I got up to 18 subscribers, so I got plenty of room for more, so there you go. So, in any case, I have a lot more things that I want to keep on editing and I still got the Godzilla vs. Kong that I'm almost fought, uh, I'm almost finished with, so I can't wait to kind of share that with you guys. So, again, it's a slow process, but it's also enjoyable to get to this point that I'm almost done with a lot of things. So, But in any case, if you can easily email me at monstersci-fi-show at gmail.com. You can follow me on the various social networks. So, again, feel free to reach out to me at any time. Love to hear from you. All right, so on that note, thank you for listening to me, to Osmar, to Jared, and to Patrick on the Monster Sci-Fi Show. It's sci-fi from a certain point of view. Good night. Welcome to Dr. Geek's Laboratory. Hello, everyone. Dr. Geek here with a shout-out to all the scientists who worked tirelessly to bring a COVID-19 vaccine into reality. <laughs> Let's face it, creating something of this magnitude is a miracle worthy of Dr. McCoy himself. And now, Dr. Geek needs you to do your part. Remember, each shot is one small step back to normal, one giant leap to putting the pandemic behind us. We can do this. For more information, visit vaccines.gov to find your nearest provider. Great things are coming on the Nerd Bliss Podcast. We're changing up our presentation while keeping the candidness that you enjoy. We'll cover all your favorite shows and movies with maybe a few surprises along the way. And you, yes, you will have opportunities to be on our show on a regular basis. That's right. You've got the Zoom Pro account and we're going to use it. So be ready. Find us at nerdblisspodcast.com and esonetwork.com and on all the socials at NerdBlissPod. NerdBliss. Listen up. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. 
Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping at the Tee Public Store, which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek.